we are now ready with uh, all the concepts and some of the tools that will be required in analyzing low noise amplifiers. So today we will uh, start this topic of low noise amplifier, but we will uh, consider the common source amplifier as a possible LNA, and then we will see what is the issue with uh, common source amplifier, the way it is used in uh, low frequency. So first uh, we will list uh, some of the characteristic parameters for uh, an LNA, and then we will see that which of those parameters we will analyze or study in this uh, course. So there are a number of uh, parameters, but we will list in the order of uh, importance for us from <clears throat> study point of view. So this list is quite long, but uh, the important ones are uh, input impedance and uh, noise factor. We are uh, already familiar with, uh, say, this uh, gain bandwidth. So whenever we study any amplifier, we invariably talk about these two parameters, and we know uh, their importance. And uh, P1 dB and uh, PIP3 we have studied and they are also important and they say that uh, what is the maximum input power that should be fit to uh, an amplifier uh, so that it is uh, uh, useful so that distortion or gain reduction doesn't start. So this is the essence of uh, P1dB and uh, IIP3. But here in this uh, uh, series of lectures on LNA, we will focus uh, primarily on uh, the first two parameters, the input impedance and the uh, noise factor. So I have listed the input impedance at the top. This is the first parameter that we will be uh, interested in uh, for any given amplifier before we can uh, use it as LNA. And second uh, parameter, which is the noise factor, is of course uh, important just to get an idea that uh, how uh, good or uh, how bad the amplifier is in terms of uh, uh, adding noise or creating noise at the output. So first, uh, why this uh, input impedance uh, is of most important? And uh, this we will try to make, of course, real and that to equal to 50 ohm. So typically, uh, or in fact, uh, all the time, the scenario that uh, LNA will face will be like this. So here is my LNA and this is my antenna. So it will be receiving electromagnetic wave and uh, this LNA will amplify the received signal. And uh, typically this received signal is going to be very small. This uh, input power to LNA is going to be very small. 
for example if you see the signal received by your mobile phone you can uh, check the strength of the signal received it will be anywhere between say minus 110 dbm to uh, typically minus 80 dbm this is the typical strength of the signal received so this is the scenario when uh, you can see that uh, signal strength is weak on the bar that is uh, displayed in the mobile phone and here the it will be like a full strength signal but here also you can see that uh, uh, these values uh, they correspond to extremely small uh, amount of power for example this minus 80 dbm corresponds to 10 raised power minus 8 milliwatt and uh, this uh, you can see is 10 raised power minus 2 nanowatt similarly this uh, minus 110 dbm uh, this corresponds to 10 raised power minus 11 milliwatt and uh, this is 10 raised to minus 5 nanowatt. So you can see that our uh, receiver, communication receiver, they typically uh, receive extremely weak signal. Right. So what we want is the most of the power should get delivered to the amplifier. So for that, uh, we should uh, ensure the maximum power transfer uh, condition getting fulfilled at uh, this input stage at this reference and uh, it was already pointed out that the the cable at least in base station or even in mobile phone it will be of 50 ohm characteristic impedance so what we want here from the amplifier is 50 ohm so this is the first condition that uh, any amplifier should fulfill before we can uh, think of using it as lna that means the amplifier immediately after the antenna. So that is why uh, we have listed the uh, input impedance as the first parameter. So we will take up uh, a number of uh, amplifiers. They all will be familiar in terms of their fundamental topology because there are only three topologies uh, using a single MOS, common source, common gate, and uh, common drain. So we will see that which of them uh, will allow us to fulfill this requirement of uh, real input impedance and uh, once we have real we can uh, do something to make it equal to 50. and noise factor part uh, uh, we are already familiar this will tell us how much uh, degradation in the signal is occurring in terms of noise so now i will simply list the uh, four most commonly used uh, LNAs. And uh, then we will take up uh, one by one, one of them uh, in subsequent classes and find out input impedance and the uh, noise factor, and then find out which of them uh, have better performance in terms of uh, noise. And also in terms of bandwidth. So keep in mind, we are talk going to talk about the LNAs using only one MOS. Later on, we will consider uh, multiple MOS uh, LNAs or amplifiers also. So there are four uh, of such uh, LNAs. The first one is called uh, Registrably Terminated. LNA. And uh, it's a circuit without complete biasing. We are not showing the, all the biasing elements involved. So here VS is uh, a signal, for example, a sinusoidal source. So here we have signal source. 
with internal resistance equal to RS. So here we have uh, RF choke, so that uh, all the RF signal, it uh, flows towards load. And uh, this is like an open for RF signal. So this will be uh, present in uh, all the LNAs that we will talk about. And uh, this is also encountered in power amplifier. And there we will uh, point out one more advantage of this uh, RF choke. And here you can see that uh, this amplifier is uh, fundamentally a common source amplifier. So all these uh, single MOS LNAs, they are not going to be a fundamentally new topology. The difference will lie only in terms of uh, some of the components present at the input or output side. And uh, I will elaborate that why we have uh, these additional components. Second is uh, called resistive feedback. By the way, the name of uh, the first LNA, resistively terminated, uh, comes because of presence of this R1. So this R1 is responsible for this name. Now here, uh, we again have a common source configuration of the amplifier. But here, a word feedback implies that there will be a feedback, and actually, this is a feedback that has uh, led to uh, this name. And then we have our usual signal source, sinusoidal signal source with RS impedance. And this also is fundamentally a CS amplifier so in all these cases so uh, this input is going to be present here so this is the input reference now we have uh, Third amplifier, which is called common gate. So here name itself is straightforward. This implies that this is uh, going to be simply a common gate amplifier. And we are already familiar with uh, this circuit. So as the name suggests, this is fundamentally a CG amplifier. Nothing special about this in terms of additional component present here, especially on the input side. Then fourth one is inductively degenerated. So as the name suggests, there is a inductor between source and ground of the amplifier. So this is the meaning of inductive degeneration.
but here we will see that there will be additional inductor at the gate. And then the signal source. So here input is at this location. And you can note that this is also fundamentally a CS amplifier because input is at the gate, fundamentally at the gate, and output is from the drain. So you can say that source is uh, common to both uh, input and output uh, side. Now we will be analyzing these for the uh, input impedance and for the noise behavior. So the first step, as was pointed out in the last class, is to have the equivalent model. That means replacing the MOS by a model consisting of uh, individual components uh, in form of registers or uh, dependent sources and maybe capacitors also. So here, uh, since we are interested in both uh, input impedance and the uh, noise behavior, so we not only need the signal model, we also need the noise model. So for uh, for JDIN calculation, we need the uh, MOS small signal model. So here in this case, uh, we will not include any noise source. So when we are trying to find out the input impedance, there will be no noise source associated uh, with any of the components, neither with the MOS nor with any other component. So this is uh, one model that we need. Second is for uh, noise factor, we need the uh, MOS noise model. Recall in the last class, uh, we discussed uh, noise factor of a network and that could be an amplifier also, but there we did not uh, know what is inside that block. So we took the network as a black box and uh, then we uh, went ahead and calculated. But here you can see that in all of these uh, LNAs, we know what is inside that black box. So we know there is a MOS, there is another inductor, uh, inductor here and uh, so on and so forth. So in this case, so uh, what we are going to do is uh, we will substitute each of the components by its uh, noise model. And uh, we have uh, already seen the noise model of uh, MOS. So we'll just uh, uh, first point out uh, what are the small signal models for the MOS that can be used. And then we will uh, quickly see the noise model also. So in the simplest uh, case, we substitute a MOS by this model. So there is only one component that is dependent current source given by GM into VGS. And the uh, VGS is gate to source voltage. So this is the simplest model and uh, for small signal, small signal means uh, the input uh, voltage at the gate or gate to source voltage is going to be uh, significantly smaller compared with the DC 
uh, gate to source voltage. So this will be uh, usually called as low frequency. Because in this case, so the internal capacitors of the MOS, they are also called parasitic capacitors because they are not desirable, but unfortunately they exist. So they haven't been included. And uh, in this case, so we have uh, not included the uh, channel length modulation, which uh, leads to a register between uh, drain and source. This has been done just to keep the things simple but they can be included. So we are going to uh, overlook this. So this is uh, without channel length modulation. And that is also conveyed by saying that uh, lambda is equal to zero. Now model two, So you might be wondering that uh, if we are going to uh, use these amplifiers at RF frequency, which will be uh, definitely high frequency. So why not uh, to use high frequency model rather than this one where we have uh, excluded the parasitic capacitor. So we are now going to uh, talk about high frequency model. And of course, uh, just for the simplicity, we will continue to neglect uh, channel length modulation. So here you can note that we now have this additional element gate to source capacitor. Present now. So these are the two models uh, that we will be using. Uh, for our analysis. So now question arises that why we will be using low frequency model uh, given that uh, input frequency is always going to be of uh, hundreds of megahertz or maybe few gigahertz also. So for that, what we are going to do is uh, every MOS or even BGT also has a parameter associated with it that is called the uh, uh, threshold frequency. So we are going to talk about this threshold frequency, and then we will see that it is this frequency which plays role in deciding whether we can use a low frequency model or the high frequency model for a given amplifier, for a given input frequency for its analysis. So we are going to talk about threshold frequency. And uh, this is also called unity gain frequency or cutoff frequency. And it is uh, designated either by omega t or by ft. So this can be found out in data sheet of uh, any transistor. And it is this naming unity gain frequency, which is used to uh, define or calculate what is the expression for omega t. So here we saw that uh, in, uh, at least in three of the previous LNAs, uh, we applied input at the gate. Here like this. And uh, for the common gate, we applied input at the source. So we know that for uh, a MOS, the fundamental quantity of input or the independent variable in terms of mathematics is gate to source voltage. So it is this gate to source voltage which is sensed or taken as input quantity and the output quantity or the dependent variable for the MOS is collector current. Let's see. 
now once we uh, have ic we can make it flow through the load and we can uh, get certain voltage so if you want more voltage of course the ic should also be more uh, and same applies uh, for the power also so so it is important to uh, see that ic should be large and uh, although for the low frequency we have uh, kept this gate to source port open but uh, in reality, a gate to source capacitor exists like this. And uh, since a capacitor exists here, so there will be definitely certain uh, gate current flowing through a gate. Like this, and this can be called as the input current. So here also in general, we will have input current and that will produce uh, this IC as the output current. So if we want uh, this to be uh, behaving like a good amplifier, there should be substantial output current or the collector current. And uh, if you see the models, then this collector current is fundamentally is going to be this GM VGS. Right. So what happens is that uh, as the frequency goes up, the impedance offered by gate to source capacitor will come down. That is why VGS will come down. And when VGS comes down, this uh, IO is going to come down. Right. So there will be a frequency where this IO will become equal to the input current, which is the gate current. So when that scenario arises, using this MOS, for the amplification is going to be meaningless because you are anyway providing input current equal to the output current. So there's no point in using this uh, uh, transistor. And uh, that point is called uh, the unity gain frequency. So let us now calculate it. So this input current will exist only when you uh, incorporate uh, gate to source capacitor in the model. Otherwise, uh, this is going to be zero and uh, we cannot uh, talk about threshold or uh, this phenomenon. So we are going to substitute this circuit by uh, its model with a gate to source capacitor. So output current is going to be this one, input current is this, and uh, we have to find out uh, what is the output current. So we know that this output current is equal to GM VGS, and uh, VGS is this voltage across the gate to source capacitor. So this will be equal to GM into 1 by J omega CGS divided by 1 by J omega CGS plus RS. So this IO is GM 1 by J omega CGS into VS divided by 1 by G omega CGS plus RS. So this factor is basically input current. So we see that output by input current, this we will be calling as current gain. This is equal to minus J GM by Omega CGS. So now let us take some typical value. GM will be typically of order of 10 raised to the power minus 3. C 
CGS is typically of hundreds of uh, femtofarad. That means this will be typically of order of 10 raised to minus 13. And omega, uh, if we see in the gigahertz region, so this is going to be of 10 raised to uh, 9 of gigahertz order. So you can see that uh, this IO by II, this will be typically of uh, this value. That means tens. So exact number will uh, vary from uh, case to case depending upon the value of these parameters. But here now you can see that uh, if we increase this omega, which is in the denominator, this will pull down, uh, sorry, this will increase the denominator and it will make this factor overall small. That means when omega increases, this number is going to reduce. And this we have already seen that will happen because gate to source voltage will decrease because of the uh, increase, uh, decrease in the impedance offered by gate to source capacitor. So this will decrease with frequency. So gate to source voltage will decrease, hence the IU will decrease. So there will be frequency at which uh, this IO by II is going to be equal to one, its magnitude, of course. So that frequency will be GM by omega, let us say omega T, CGS is equal to one. So that means omega T is going to be equal to GM by CGS. So this is the meaning of uh, uh, or the expression for the threshold frequency or unity current gain frequency or cutoff frequency. Now here you can see that if we have a MOS which has very small CGS, the parasitic capacitor, in that case omega T is going to be uh, very large. Right. So here if we have very large omega t that amounts to having a very low CGS. And if you have very low CGS, then you can neglect and take this model as the sufficiently accurate model for the MOS. So that is why I have also mentioned this model, which is typically used for low frequency. So now this low frequency uh, can also be equivalently interpreted as very high omega t. So if you have very high omega t MOS, that will be equivalent to taking this model for the MOS for analyzing the given circuit even at high frequency. So now wherever we uh, have low omega t, there we will be using this model too. And there's one more thing uh, I will point out, a more factor which we will have to keep in mind while deciding which of the two models to use, even if omega t is not very high. So at this moment, let us say that when we have very high omega t, we use model one. When we have uh, low omega t, we use model two. But this is one criteria. Second criteria I will point out later on. Right, so that is why uh, I pointed out uh, both the uh, models for the uh, MOS. Now we will quickly see uh, what are the noise model uh, so that we can uh, uh, start using them in the analysis of uh, LNAs. So in the Lecture on noise, it was pointed out there are two types of noise, thermal noise and uh, flicker noise. So the first noise that we encounter is uh, channel thermal noise. And uh, for that, MOS is modeled in this way using the current source. We have also seen the voltage source model. So we attach a noise current source uh, between 
drain and source. And this we found was 4K T gamma GD0 delta F. And uh, second was uh, flicker noise. So for flicker noise, we also attached one current source, but we are not going to include this flicker noise in our analysis of any LNA because it will only complicate. Although uh, strictly speaking, this can be included. There's one more noise source which we did not talk about, but if you want to be more accurate, you can include it. But here we will exclude. You can uh, repeat any uh, analysis that we are going to do with uh, this uh, model as well, and you will see that uh, you have a more accurate result. So that is called uh, gate thermal noise. So the conductive element which is used to implement gate that also gives rise to thermal noise. But that noise is very small compared with the uh, noise arising from the channel. So that is why when one wants to carry out first stable analysis, that means with the uh, simpler model, then we try to exclude this one. But this is uh, included. In this form, we say that uh, there is a RG gate resistance associated with the gate, and uh, there is a noise source which we call VG. So here, uh, MOS has been kept as it is. So we have only shown the noise sources external uh, to the MOS, and uh, now this MOS, any of these MOS, can be substituted by the previous two models that we have discuss based upon the uh, threshold frequency of the MOS that we are considering. So now we have uh, all these uh, models uh, for the input impedance, that means signal model and uh, for uh, noise. So now what we can do, we can uh, just take the common source amplifier and uh, try to see that uh, if we try to use it as a low noise amplifier, then what are the issues? So we have common source as LNA. So we are short of uh, proposing that let us use common source amplifier as LNA and the common source is this circuit. So our view is here, and uh, we are connecting our signal directly to the gate source is grounded. So here we have a common source, and uh, we are saying that this can be used as LNA. So as was pointed out, first thing that we will have to see is if JDIN is real or not. Once it is real, then we can do something to make it equal to 50. And JDIN has to be calculated at this reference. Now here we see that when you look into gate, there are two possibilities. And these arises because of uh, two models. So when we use model one, then the possibility will be like this. So I'm not showing the complete circuit on the drain side. So here from here, we have to find out Z in. So you can see that it is looking into open. So this is going to be infinite. So this is not, this cannot be made equal to 50 ohm. Right, so this is uh, one case. Second is with the model two. So now if I use uh, model two, where I have to include gate to source capacitor also. And uh, in this case, if I look into the gate, then what I'm going to see is uh, 
impedance which will be of capacitive nature. So this is not going to be equal to real, right? So if you use a MOS in the simplest possible configuration of common source, then it will not fulfill the first and the most important requirement for LNA. That is why you can now go back to all those four LNAs and you can recall that there uh, has been done modification uh, on the input side exactly to fulfill this requirement. We will uh, talk about this thing more detail in uh, uh, future classes. Now, second is uh, we just want to uh, see that suppose we somehow in forcible way use it, this as LNA, then what is the noise factor? And uh, this noise factor we will keep in mind uh, to see that the, uh, what is the noise behavior of all those four LNAs that we have pointed out with respect to this circuit, which is not suitable to be used as LNA, but uh, in terms of uh, noise behavior, whether this one is better or those four uh, LNAs are better. So now we want to uh, know the noise factor. Of uh, this uh, common source uh, LNA. So. What we need to do is uh, for noise factor, we have to find out uh, total output power. Noise power, of course. Divided by output noise power. Only due to the source signal source that means it is uh, RS which will be responsible for that uh, noise. <clears throat> so here, what we will have to do is uh, recall all those uh, steps that we took for finding out noise factor of an arbitrary network. The same steps we will have to now uh, follow. But here, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to take the Norton model for the network. In the last lecture, we took uh, the Thevenin model and we calculated the output uh, mean square voltages to find out this numerator of the uh, this equation, and then proceeded ahead. And uh, at the end, it was pointed out that uh, Norton model can also be used. So that is what we are going to do this time. And uh, in fact, for majority of the LNAs, we will do this. But uh, at the end, we will also take up a uh, Thevenin model as well. So what we will have to first do is uh, find out the noise model of PS LNA, that uh, previous circuit that we have pointed out. So in this case, what we are going to do, we are going to substitute each of the noise, thermal noise producing component present in this circuit with their thermal uh, noise model. So here we find that uh, we have two sources of noise. One is this RS and uh, second is this MOS. And the uh, thermal noise produced by this uh, inductor is going to be very small because ideally it is a perfect conductor. So there is no resistance involved here. So there is no thermal noise. So we will overlook. And this is load itself. So uh, no need of uh, uh, including its uh, uh, noise contribution because here you can see that the amplifier is, uh, let us say, up to this point. So this is the output of the amplifier. So amplifier is between this region. And here we have source and here we have load. So earlier we had a black box here for this region, but now we have 
uh, specific components uh, given to us. So there are only two noise sources. One is inside MOS uh, amplifier, and another is the source. So we, as was pointed out, we are going to take the Norton model for the LNA or the amplifier. So in this Norton model, what we will assume is that on the output side, we have output current with uh, certain output resistance feeding to RL. So that capacitor on the output side uh, will be short circuited because we are dealing with high frequencies, only RL will survive. And of course, on the input side, RI. So here you can see that uh, if I know IO, I can find out uh, power to load. Load as. This is going to be equal to. R not square RL divided by R not plus RL whole square into IU mean square. So if I know the output uh, current, this is actually called shorted output current, uh, then we can know what will be the power to the load. So here you can see that uh, we have a, uh, let us call this factor alpha I not square. So in the process of finding out output power, all we need to do is just uh, find out this uh, IO due to each of the noise sources. And this factor alpha is going to be same for all the noise sources. So we now uh, will replace uh, the previous uh, circuit with the noise model. So noise model will amount to replacing the register, the source by its noise model. So we will continue to have RS, but now this will be noiseless. Earlier it is noisy. Now this will be substituted by its uh, noise uh, voltage source. So we will call VN as the noise voltage source. Now this will be connected to our MOS. So this is our MOS. And we are going to take uh, model one just to keep, uh, or we can include uh, this capacitor also, because in this case analysis is not going to be extremely complicated. So let us include this uh, gate to source capacitor also. And then here we have load, but we are not going to include the noise produced by load itself because we are here trying to do how much noise power gets delivered to the load or due to everything else. And uh, we now need to add the noise produced by the MOS itself. So we have seen that that can be done by including a noise source between drain and source, and we will be calling it as ID. So ID is noise produced by the drain, thermal noise from the drain, and this will be 4 kT gamma GD0 delta F. And uh, this VN is 4 kT. RS delta F mean square of this VN. So these are the only two noise sources present in uh, this circuit. Now we have to uh, find out the uh, output current due to each of these sources, then add and then find out the mean square. So here, fortunately, uh, these two they are going to be uncorrelated because they are arising from two physically independent uh, uh, elements. So 
So this will simplify your analysis a bit. So we have now the noise model. Now from each of these uh, uh, sources, that is from RS and from the MOS, we will find out what is the uh, short circuited output current. So as was pointed out, this I naught is basically the short circuited output current. So here, if you short circuit, entire I naught flows through this, not through RL, neither through R zero. So in the step two, uh, we find out the short circuited output current due to each of the sources one by one. So first we do. That is due to VN. So here uh, we include only this source in the uh, model. So this is my VN source, no IG source. Now this is connected to MOS. And uh, from superposition principle, we have uh, excluded the channel noise current. ID has already been removed and we have shorted the green. So here you can see that there will be a current ION flowing through this and it is this ION which is going to be the uh, short circuited uh, output current in the Norton equivalent model of this circuit. So we want to know what is going to be ION. So this we will be calling as I O N. So we are designating here by RMS, but uh, actually we will be doing all this uh, calculation in time domain and uh, then find out the mean square before we find the power. So I O N is equal to G M V G S. Now we can substitute uh, V G S. So this will be one by G Omega C G S divided by 1 by j omega cgs plus rs into vn so this is so i o n we can simplify it further So this is the short circuited output current uh, due to RS. Now due to the shorted output, output current due to MOS, that means uh, that is due to the channel current. So for this case, so we will include only this noise source in the model. So now on the input side, there is a no noise source present. And we have this MOS and this noise source because of the channel. And then drain it shorted. So you can also again see that RL will have actually no contribution. Uh, RL gets short circuited. So here we want to know what is this uh, short circuited current. Uh, we will be calling this as IOD. So we want to know what is this IOD. Right. So here you can see that uh, uh, in this case, this IOD is going to be equal to this ID itself, because here uh, there is a no uh, current going towards this gate to source. So the VGS in this case is going to be zero. So this current is going to be zero. So what we will have is 
IOD equal to ID itself. The entire ID will flow like this. Uh, you can also note that the other end, which is connected to the source, is anyway grounded. So equivalently, what has happened here is that uh, the first end is anyway connected here. Second end is equivalently connected here. So that is why this ID will circulate in this loop. So both the terminals of this ID are shorted. So that is why none of the current will flow into this direction. So now we have uh, two currents. Therefore, the total is a step three. Total output shorted current is IO is going to be ION plus IOD. And uh, we have already found out the expression for uh, these two. But uh, now we can find out the mean square because we have already seen that if we know the mean square, this quantity, then we know the total power, which will be a factor dependent upon registers multiplied by that mean square. So in this, uh, we have found out total and then maybe in step four, we can find out the total mean square output current. So IO mean square is going to be IOM plus IOD mean square. And since uh, these two are uncorrelated, so this is going to be mean square of individual. There uh, ION into IOD, this mean is going to be equal to zero. So this is the uh, benefit of uncorrelated sources. Now, in step uh, five, total power to the load, PL is going to be a factor alpha into IO mean square. So this is going to be equal to alpha into IO n mean square plus IO d mean square. And uh, output power only due to RS is going to be load power due to RS is going to be alpha into mean square output current due to RS, which is ION mean square. So now we can uh, in step uh, six, we can find out noise factor, which is going to be PL divided by PL RS. So this will turn out to be IUN mean square plus IOD mean square divided by IUN mean square. So this becomes equal to one plus IOD mean square divided by IUN mean square. Right. So now we can substitute the expression for each of these. So for IOD, we have already seen that this is simply equal to ID. But for IUN, we have to uh, find out the expression. And uh, if you work out, uh, this will turn out to be EM square VN square divided by one plus omega square CGS whole square RS square. So this will become one plus ID mean square into one plus omega square CGS square RS square divided by GM square VN square. Now we can substitute um, each of these current and voltage sources in terms of uh, conductance and resistor. So this is uh, 4 KT delta F will cancel out. And uh, what we will be left is gamma GD zero 
into one plus omega square CGS square RS square divided by GM square RS. So this can be separated out in three factors gamma GD zero divided by GM square RS plus omega square GM square. We can take this CGS in the denominator. So gamma GD zero RS. So this can be further simplified to gamma GD zero GM square RS plus. So now you can see that this factor is nothing but omega T. So this becomes omega by omega T whole square. So this is the noise factor from a common source amplifier without matching. That means uh, input impedance is in this case uh, capacity. So here you can see that these two factors are uh, independent of frequency. But this one is frequency dependent. And here you can see one important thing that uh, this omega by omega t ratio appears here. And why we are getting this frequency dependent term? Because we included CGS. So if you do not include CGS in the model, all the answer are going to be frequency independent. So we would have got only this much for CGS is equal to zero. That is for omega t very high. So I pointed out that you can uh, take a model without CGS when omega t is very high. <clears throat> I also pointed out there's another way in which uh, you can exclude CGS and that you can see from here. So if the operating frequency is very, very small compared with omega t, even for omega t, which is not very high. So here we said that omega t has to be very high before you can take CGS. That means you can exclude uh, CGS. So if you want to exclude, but here you can see that even if omega t is finite, say for example, uh, 10 gigahertz, which is uh, rare these days, all the MOS they come with omega t greater than 100 gigahertz. So even if you have omega t, which is say 10 gigahertz, and if you're taking your operating frequency at say 100 megahertz, so this is uh, definitely very small compared with the uh, omega. So here you have uh, a 10 raised power eight and here you have 10 raised power 10. So difference is omega by omega T in this case is going to be 10 raised power minus two, right? Now, when you take square, this becomes 10 raised power minus four. So you can 10 raised to power minus four is quite small number. So this can the second factor then can now be uh, neglected. So even if you have omega t, which is not large, but omega operating frequency, this is the operating frequency is very, very small compared with omega t at least one tenth. Then also it amounts to taking CGS is equal to zero. So model first model can be taken under two condition omega operating frequency one tenth or even smaller compared with omega t or the absolute frequency uh, um, absolute omega t very very high. So this is the noise factor and uh, we will be comparing this uh, with the subsequent LNAs that we will talk about to see whether their noise behavior is better than this or worse than this. But this circuit cannot be used as LNA because the input impedance is not 50.